Welcome, guys. My name is Brian Knight, and today we'll be uh, hopefully coming to uh, 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 examples. Where we, this is actually a, a session I did at Pass. It was an hour and a half session at Pass. We're going to condense this down to just under 58 minutes, hopefully. Um, again, my name is Brian Knight. My email address is bknight at pragmaticworks.com. Uh, you're welcome to do the examples with me. You'll just need AdventureWorks DW, uh, one of the flavors of AdventureWorks DW, whether it be uh, 2008 or 2012. And then you'll also need analysis services in MOLAP mode. So again, this, this session is being recorded. So later time, if you want to, you can pause it, play it back, and kind of walk step by step through this. You're going to find that data mining is actually one of the best technologies inside a SQL Server stack, but also it's a very easy one to learn for the most part also. So let's begin. Uh, again, uh, oh, don't worry about your cell phones. This is actually the same exact uh, deck from past, as you can see. Uh, my name is Brian Knight. I'm out of Jacksonville, Florida, where I'm a SQL Server MVP. Uh, I'm a founder of Pragmatic Works, and I've authored about actually about 15 books now. Some of the books I've authored here, uh, I sell those all around all around out of my cars and different uh, flea markets and things. And I blog at a website called bidn.com. That's a BI Developer Network, and my Twitter handle is at Brian Knight. All right, so uh, data mining is actually one of the most most to me it's one of the most fascinating topics inside of technology because it's an area where IT goes from a cost center into a, a business center at that point. There's so many examples where IT can now add you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to the bottom line. Think about what would Amazon be or Netflix be without a recommendation engine. So without that recommendation engine to predict things in the future, to say that you know, based on the patterns of books that you like or the videos you watch, here are some other good videos. Uh, those are the kind of things that really, really help Amazon grow. Without that, that's an IT function, they would have, they would have uh, really floundered in some cases. You're having to go and find out. Uh, I, mean, just, I can't tell you how many times I've kind of picked a video or picked a movie or a, a book based on something else that's recommended. So it's going to help us from a business analyst perspective explore our data. It's also going to help us find patterns in our data, and most importantly, it's going to make predictions. So how does it do that? Well, it's going to do that by simply the process is going to be you have to first of all figure out what kind of question you want to ask data mining. Now, the cool thing about this from the technology side, you already own this today. If you own SQL Server, you own data mining today. Everything you need to do this. So once you know the question, which sounds easy, but it's sometimes not easy, you have to figure out where is the data that I'm going to need to answer that question. Once you have that data, we have to prepare the data. And repairing the data is generally going to be an SSIS function. Sometimes it might be a function of, of, um, of T-SQL and doing joining of tables or creating views. But most of the time, it's going to be an SIS or a T-SQL function. After that, we'll whip out analysis services, and we'll do some modeling. And we'll do all this in this webinar today. And then we evaluate the model to see how accurate this model actually is. We deploy it to production, and then we start the whole process over again. This whole process, for the most part, can take days, not weeks or months. Another misconception is data mining is, uh, does not require that you have a data warehouse. It does not require that you have a cube. All it requires is that you have data in a table. Now, while there is plugins for Excel to do this, we're going to be showing the Visual Studio way of doing it today because it gives you a, a, few more, a few more knobs you can turn and more things you can do inside of it. And it's more of a developer experience, and that's who I have on the phone right now. But your business users can also use Excel plugins for this. So this whole process, again, about a week to do, roughly. Now, to get the production, it might take you, you know, three or four weeks, maybe, to do. But the process is not that difficult. And that's one of the biggest misconceptions of it. Now, there's a number of algorithms that are actually built in to analysis services. Here are some of the algorithms we have, and this is one of the most important parts. It's one of the most confusing parts about it, but this has been around since SQL Server 2000. So literally 14 years, these algorithms have been in existence, or part of these have been in existence. So the first and most important two are going to be decision trees and clustering. Let's start with decision trees. So decision trees is going to answer a classification question, really a yes-no question. Are you a good customer or are you not a good customer? Uh, are you male or are you female? So those kind of questions, like a Boolean kind of yes-no questions, really putting customers into uh, cla classifying customers. There's also clustering algorithm. Now, clustering is going to be for uh, putting customers in buckets to determine fraud in many cases. So picture a line graph that looks like this. 
So along the, top, the bottom axis, I have, or top axis, I'll have salaries. And along the, 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 the horizontal axis, I might have um, uh, careers. There we go. So if I have a farmer who lives in Wisconsin, and it's really a 3D graph kind of going this way, but we'll stop here. So if I have a farmer in Wisconsin, I might put his salary and his career somewhere along this axis right here. And I have another farmer from the Midwest in Idaho who, who makes uh, $20,000. Another farmer who's making $80,000, or sorry, uh, uh, $30,000. And then maybe I have some lawyers over here that are making uh, you know, $100,000, $200,000, or whatnot. Over time, you start to get buckets of data. So my lawyers are over here in this bucket right here, and my farmers in the Midwest are over here. So maybe I call my farmer, create a farmer bucket right here. So my point is this. Now all of a sudden, you get a farmer who comes in, so he says he's along this axis right here in the career axis, but he says he's making $1.2 million. Well, so you can put a little dot right here. Now what the clustering algorithm is going to do is it's going to allow you to measure the distance between him and his peers, and because it's so far apart, you can say there's point only 8% chance that he's actually uh, saying the correct salary. And I'll show this to you and, and, uh, and demonstrate it to you live, actually right now, I'm going to hop over real quick. So to show this to you live, I'm going to bring open SQLServerDataMining.com. It's a really, really nice uh, website here. Uh, it's, a, uh, it's a run by the data mining team. I'm going to do uh, live, live samples, and I'm going to go to my data validation sample. Now, the cool thing about this, all the code for this is right here, and the actual application is right here. So the neat thing is, is if you have a, a team of people, let's start an example click here, excuse me. If you have a team of people that are basically, if you have an application that looks like this, a data entry application, uh, some kind of application around um, uh, maybe doing some kind of uh, uh, data validation or loan application. This is a great app. This is a great kind of example. I'm going to hit show details so you can see the query down below, and I'm going to select. A, uh, I have a, a, a female. Oh, come on, female, and let's make her 24 years old. Let's give her maybe 18 years of education, and my occupation is going to be a craftsman, and her relation to head of household is going to be a female head of house. 